Okay, so for the standard orthognathic assessment, we have our patient uh, James here. Um, you really want just an early overall assessment of the patient to begin with, starting in the profile view, and you want one sentence that summarises briefly what you're looking at. So clearly we've got a class 2 patient uh, with a degree of mandibular retrogenia and a slightly decreased lower anterior face height. If you move from the profile back to a view from the front, you're really wanting to look for any asymmetry. And there is no obvious gross facial asymmetry here. There might be a little bit of bowing of the lower border of the chin just on the right hand side. So once you've established that very quick assessment, you want to move to the more detailed assessment. So James, if you can just relax and let your lips fall apart. So the first thing you want to assess is the upper incisor show at rest, which here is three millimetres. Just give us a big smile, James. And the upper incisor show at smiling is seven millimetres. You want to look at the midlines, and to look at the midlines, you need to do this from the front. And just show us your teeth again. And the upper dental centre line looks coincident with the facial midline. The tip of the nose may be a fraction off to the left, and the chin also looks central. But it's very important not only to assess the midline from the front, but also from the back. I'm just popping you back, James. If you look down on the patient from above, you can accentuate everything with a vertical marker from the mid-facial midline. Again, this confirms that the nasal tip is possibly a fraction off to the left. You place your pointer in the upper incisor, but the upper midline is coincident with the facial midline but you can see that the chin point is also off to the left. If we just ask James to sit up again a little bit. We now want to look at the nasolabial angle, which is slightly obtuse, and possibly there's a touch of paranasal hollowing. We now want to assess the overbite and the overjet. Just bite together for us, James, in your back teeth. Very easy to measure the overjet with one of these calipers. So we've got an overjet of just under nine millimetres. And just bite together again and show us your teeth and open. So you can see that the overbite comes down to just below the orthodontic bracket. So there's a, a relatively deep overbite. There's a slightly prominent labiamental fold. And the other measurement we want to assess, partly because it can help you with planning, but it can also help you in theatre, is the width of the alar base. And the alar base is simply measured with the calipers and comes out at 36 and a bit millimetres. The final assessment is whether or not there is an occlusal cant, and you can do that just by asking the patient to open their mouth. Be careful for orthodontic arch wires, they often give you a very artificial impression of an occlusal cant or not, but put a flat edge across the occlusal surface and compare it to the eyes. And you can see that the maxilla is possibly a fraction down on the right hand side, which would be consistent with our suggestion that the lower border of the mandible was just a little bit lower on the right, and that the chin point was a fraction off to the left. So in essence, we have a class 2 patient with a deep overbite, increased overjet, a very mild degree of panfacial asymmetry with the right side of the face ever so slightly longer than the left. We know the incisor show at rest is three millimetres, which is about normal. The incisor show at smiling is nine, 
and the alar base width is just a little bit larger than average. So that completes your assessment of the patient. You will see it's fairly rapid. We don't want to overcomplicate the matters. You don't need pages and pages of data obtained from your examination. You need a certain number of facts, each of which you can use to determine what your surgical moves will be when you move on to the planning phase. Thank you, Ken. That's us.